Item 12 is regards paychecks, which I'm afraid none of us will be cashing today, people. Oh. What can I tell you? Councilman Langell is filibuster against the city budget compromise is now in the 63rd hour. With either voluntary withdrawal or heart attack considered imminent. What about assassination? Yeah. It is being voted on as we speak. Now, Mayor D'Angelo, you'll be pleased to learn applause their valorous devotion to duty in this crisis. Yeah, eat this, Mario. <laughs> Item 13, and only a slightly less gory note. Package 14, containing Mr. Jeunesse's left forearm and hand, was discovered in a phone booth on Plymouth last evening. Yeah, trying to make a call. For those of you keeping score, Dr. Benedetto, in the tradition of the great Italian masters of the past, has contributed the following. Uh, Richard, give me a hand. The, uh, the uh, shaded areas mean it's still out there. <laughs> People, while I sternly remind you of the laws of this country against gaming, Detective Benedetto has asked me to pass along the following data, which he assures me is for news information only. Single action play on particular organs and extremities is still available. <laughs> on the over and under 18 is the dead number. <laughs> a five to one is being offered on total packages recovered by June sell, 1st. Sell. Give me 20 on the Spring part. time, love it. <laughs> Moving right along. Item 14, the population of County Psychiatric was reduced by about 37 yesterday morning. When our multiple personality guy of a couple of days ago, Reggie, also known as TJ, also known as et cetera, et cetera, escaped. Ergo, all radio motor patrol units be on the lookout vicinity of men's shelter on 133rd Street Flop House. All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, 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 hey! Let's be careful out there. Okay, go for it. All right, the bankers spent 20 I don't to want one. that. I don't Liver's want that. still out there. I don't want that. Yeah, both I've the feet. Got $5 here says it's going to be the waste. The waste? Where's your little biology? That's hey, never <laughs> so, mind. Sal, Sal, I got $10 on the market. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. The romantic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, I got hey, a tip, okay? The next thing to show up is going to be the heart. What are you, Madam Marie? Hey, would you just trust me, okay? I ain't standing around here for the climate. Still got no tankers and a pancreas? Big chef, you got it. Five dollars on a heart. Ooh, another one. What is this, Valentine's Day? On the soul. I got a picture. Yeah, great. All right. Hey, Leo. What do you want, Where you been? I was starting to worry. Oh, you know, I slipped over my sister's place. Oh. It, it, it's okay. I'm making it. Every hour it gets easier, you know? Good. Hey, come with me. I got something for you to do today. I'm gonna put you on a desk. Hey, all right. You know, I always wanted a desk right. job. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hey, 
Andy, go for the third stall. The latch is broken. It came up in conversation. Don't look in the mirror. You're too ugly. You ain't even got a face. Go on down here. Don't look underneath there. Move a little bit to the right. I sure hope we get a lot of calls today, because there ain't nothing I'd rather be doing than running around this city after dangerous criminals without the benefit of one red cent top. I don't know, Rinko. The way things are these days, I guess we're lucky it's only temporary. Temporary is not putting pork and beans in my table. Temporary is not paying my utility bills and putting gas in my hog. Temporary well, look is not... at that. Look at this. 202 North on Jefferson in pursuit of foot suspect. That man run. Let him turn, let him turn. Go for him. Go for him. What do you think this is? Looks like stolen property. To me, it looks like unclaimed currency. Look at this. Carmen, $327 box, Junior, three, six, five, fifty cents straight. Now, you know as well as I do that Carmen and Junior ain't coming back to this. <laughs> Rico, I know what you're thinking. Just forget about it. No, 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 no. Before you run to any rash conclusions, just think about this. If we don't turn this in, ain't nobody ever gonna know. Get in the car. All right, all right, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll put this in the back seat. We're in no hurry to turn it in, and it ain't going nowhere. And it'll give you and me a chance to think this thing over. Thought about it. Now get in the car. 
Yeah, I know you took over my paper. I don't care what Feldstein said. I'm just going through some lean times, that's all. 28 grand? That's jive, man. I just gave him four last week. I think you better let me see that paper. Yeah, I know who it is. 1230, I'll be there. Hands on the hook. All right. <laughs> See what I'm talking about, Howard? I try to show some initiative. And look at the low priority my project gets. How's that, Sport? This cop tip guy from the radio station got sick. And who do they give me for an assistant? A common junkie. Two days ago, he thought there were turtles coming out of his chest. Oh. Well, Ray, one might argue that... Uh... A DJ and a junkie are not worlds apart on the evolutionary ladder. Well, besides, the scientists have been quite successful in training your apes, your orangutans, or even your gibbons to perform all sorts of perfunctory tasks. This is not a perfunctory task, Howard. This is my project. Well, just the same, this boy might surprise you. I, uh, excuse me, uh, Lieutenant, a woman just called in about the robbery. She said uh, two men got approximately uh, $800 in cash from her husband's liquor store. Uh, one of the men was black, he was about 6'1", and I had red shirt and black pants. And the other one was uh, Caucasian, he was about 5'7", he was slim, uh, dark hair and clothes. Oh, and, and both men were armed. Good work. What's the address? The address. Faye, it's a lunch, not a showdown. Yeah. And I still think it's a good idea. Sure, you can talk things over, clear the air. <laughs> Joyce isn't trying to take your son away from you, Faye. She's just concerned about Frank Jr.'s welfare. No, nobody says you're not. Look, I really have to go. You're going to be fine, Faye. You, I promise. Yeah. Let a broad find out she can get away with busting your chaps, and it's good night, nurse. You talked to Simone? He got the paper from Felstein night before last. Saw the fake markers on me for 28 grand. Want to have lunch today? Talk about a payment schedule. Good. I don't have to warn you about this guy, Neil. Yeah, I know, Captain. He's bad. I just don't want to see you end up in 18 different packages. Only 14 so far, Captain. You sure your cover's airtight? No problem. It's taken care of. We loaded the computer. Make it look like Neil's finances are in the doghouse. Well, didn't have to tell me lies about that. <laughs> what about Feldstein? Somebody sitting on him? Mo told me he's hopping the next plane to Miami. Believe me, that little runt's the least of our problems. Oh, no, a heart. Yeah. No, a chicken's heart's too small. You got anything bigger? I don't want a rump roast. I want a heart. I'm in veterinary school. It's a class project, okay? Calf's heart? How big is it? Okay, wrap it up. I'll be down this afternoon. What's the doing, babe? Who wants to know? Ah, oh, come on, JD. Turn off the ice box routine. It's just an assignment. Hey, from where I sit, it doesn't look like you mind it too much. Look, man, I know Benedetta rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Oh. I used to feel the same way myself. But I gotta tell you something, babe. If it weren't for that guy two days ago, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Hey, what is this, Brian's song? Okay, you brought a tear to my heart. The guy is a snail, Neil. He leaves a trail of slime everywhere he goes. Well, if it isn't Ray Milan, what are you, up there between suspensions? That's real cute, Sal. Why don't you call me when you get your oil changed? 
no, you're dead right, Neil. The guy's a dreamboat. Cockchips, uh, is, uh, Rico speaking. I, uh, I found something real strange in my front yard this morning. Yeah, you know, I've been hearing on the news about those pieces of that guy you've been finding. I think this might be one. You kidding? Uh, uh, just ha hang on a second. Hey, I, I, th I think I got another piece of Buddy Jeanette. Hey, did you get the address? Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, well, thanks. All right, sir, could I have your address? Yeah, 117 North Hurdle. 117 North Hurdle. All right, I got it. Uh, we're going to send somebody over right away. Oh, hey, I'll take that one, kid. Hey, thanks, JB. Don't mention it. You're getting old real fast, you know that? sense of humor the boys have, huh? Okay, Rhoda, baby, do your stuff. I'm sorry, but you're too late. You could have had the thrill of your life. Ha, ha. What's that? Who knows? There's so many gadgets on this thing, I don't know. Anybody hurt? A couple guys cut a little something, nothing serious. Howard, you think you ought to evacuate the building? Negative, Frank. We've completed a perimeter check of the entire building, the rooftop, and the parking lot. There is no evidence of terrorist activity. All right, Henry, use anybody who's free. Get a list of everybody issued a visitor's pass in the past 72 hours that's run a check on them. I want forensics up here pottering, and I want the bomb squad in here with dogs to check for any other devices. Gotcha. got you. Oh, check the heights in Midtown. There's no reason to assume that this is just an isolated incident. Right. Howard, let's get all the civilians down to the parking lot till we get a clearance from the bomb squad, okay? Just to be sure. Leo, easy, would you? You okay? I'm fine, Captain. I just got hit with a couple of splinters. It's all right. Can we all go back to work now? Oh. Hey, I'm fine. Could I ask you what that beeping sound was before the whole explosion thing? Explosive sensor. TK's most recently developed subsystem. Well, I have to apologize for almost getting the whole thing blown up. Nonsense. This model is designed to withstand a much larger explosion. No harm done. Anyway, I, I feel bad and wanted to tell you. I'm very sorry to hear it. I wouldn't want to be responsible for making someone as Lovely as yourself, feel anything out of you. Wonderful.
Yeah, right, what? Frank, I want you to hear this. Just came in. It's me, TJ. Just thought I'd call you and see how you like my surprise package. Hey, don't worry if I missed you this time, because I've got lots more. And don't think you can stop me. I can get in and out anytime I want to. guy's got a problem. The man who escaped county psychiatric yesterday. Sounds the same. No luck getting a trace? We're not set up for it, Frank. Wait. He'll call back. You can bet on it. I'll be 344. What are you gonna do with it, LaRue? I mean, after you finish snookering Benedetto. What do you mean, what am I going to do with it? Best thing is to boil it. Then you grind it into a pate. You stuff blintzes with it. I'm telling you, you never tasted anything so good. What, I look like some kind of an urban cannibal here? That's Buddy Jeanette's heart, a human being. Thanks, Mac. Mr. Simone. Neil. Sit down. You hungry? Uh, no, thanks. Sure? Positive. Thanks anyway. What is it, Neil? You seem nervous to me. Am I right? A little bit. Forget about being nervous. We're going to work everything out, all right? Okay. Neil, uh, I've got to tell you, I went through your paper here, I ran your credit. I don't know how Mo could let things get this far. Mr. Simone, the last payment Neil, I made... Neil, let's do both of us a favor and you keep your mouth shut. Because i got to tell you, I heard every lie you're going to tell me. All right? Now, I'm going to do the talking. Now, I say, I don't know how Mo let things get this far. In terms, you got 28 grand in debts. Mr. Simone, I only borrowed seven... Shut up, Neil. This includes VIG, which makes you not 700 a week. This isn't open to discussion, all right? Now, I got something else to tell you, Neil. Seven yards a week. Every week, no way you're going to make that not without doing something illegal. Which, if you're going to do something wrong, don't make it a nickel shot. You follow? Now, I'm going to tell you about a situation. And I want you to tell me, could you do anything good with it? All right? I'm listening. All right. It's a suitcase, we'll say. Uh, some property is involved in an arrest. You follow? Speak to me when I speak to you, Neil. Some property. Some property took a fall and is in the police property room. My priest, Midtown. Now, I uh, suppose it belonged to a, a cousin of mine, whatever the situation is. And this individual wanted the suitcase back. Now, this is the situation where I feel you could be of help, Neil. <laughs> no. no. I don't think so, Mr. Small. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Why is that? 
It's tough to get into another precinct's property room. It's tough. I hope it's tough. Otherwise, why would I wipe out a $28,000 loan? And if a person showed some initiative, he could walk away with another fin in his pocket, which I'd also understand if there were added expenses with whoever you had to fix to get in. I don't know, Mr. Simone. Listen to me, Mio. You don't know. Do you know the name Buddy Jeanette? Yeah. This is a terrible thing which happened to this guy. You know something, Neil? He owed less than 28000 Follow me. Well, let me think about it. Excuse me. Think about it. Use some imagination, because I want to hear from you today. What's going to happen to all that money? We turn it in, nobody claims it. It's just going to sit down at county property and mold until the statutes run out. And the city will get it like it's supposed to. So, A, we got a city the size of this one, and B, we got me and you. Now, who do you think is more deserving than $2,942.38? We're not taking the money, Rinko. It's just wrong. Wrong? I tell you what's wrong. This is wrong. Now, I don't know why it is that I have to be fair to this city when this city is under no obligation to be fair to me. It's not the same thing. And just why is it? I don't know. Can we just drop it? Yeah, okay, okay. First, I want you to hear my side. We take the money. We split it. That's 1,400 just down the middle. Okay, now we've got Bobby Hill. He's got two hands. With the right hand, he's down there at the landlords. He's down there at the power company. He's down there at the phone company. He's paying off all his necessities now. In the meantime, with his left hand, he's down at Globeman's. He's buying himself a new suit. He's buying himself a pearl necklace for his girlfriend. He's buying a couple of cashmere sweaters, maybe a new pair of those new balance running shoes, $100 a pop. Those are out now? Yes. I don't know, Brinko. Of course, I haven't even gone into my own financial state such that it is. So I didn't want to put any unfair pressure on you. Why don't you just keep the money? Keep it for yourself. All right, supposing I did this. Supposing I did keep all the money. And then, in an entirely unrelated transaction, supposedly I made you a gift, which amounted to, say, half the proceeds. Would that soothe your already overheated conscience? If we're going to do it, it's on the both of us. We're in it together. Take that as a yes. But I'm telling you, Rico, it's just a one-time only proposition. Absolutely, Roberto. It's as if our Eddie died and went to heaven. 211 and Jocko's, Genesee and Chippewa. Three most overused words in the English lexicon. 211 at Jocko's. Will you lighten up? I'm light. I'm up. 2202 responding. Roger, 2202. Look, I was at the stoplight. She reaches in the window, grabs my privates with one hand and my wallet with the other. And what are you laughing at? Nothing. I chased her here. That guy says I'm the one causing trouble. Grabs me and starts asking questions. In the meantime, she's running out the back. What do you know, Jocko? Guy comes in here screaming and yelling. How do I know what's going on? Come on, you wouldn't even let me use the phone! It's out of order, man. Sir, did you get a good look at the woman? 
Not really. Well, how much money did you lose? Twenty-six dollars. Sir, if you want to come in and make a complaint, we'll take you through the paperwork. You saying it's a waste of time? I can't be the judge of that. Depends on what else you got to do, sir. Well, I'll tell you. That man might as well have been an accessory. This place should be closed down. Sir, this place has been closed down more often than the Detroit auto plant. Let me have a 77 there, Jocko. <laughs> What's so funny? That's you fellas short out there. That is our police vehicle outside, yes, sir. Why? Skull, brother. <laughs> oh, mother, what have they done to your child? And then they'll find a statue in the truck, and, and then I'm going to jail. You're not going to jail. You are oh, suffering from man. acute delusionary paranoia, and I am suffering from heart palpitations. It's just a dream that I'm in, in, the, in the joint, in the same cell with, with the people that I, I sent away. I'm going to call up a unit and have them come down here and pick us up. No, don't do that, Rico. I, I just have to think, man. I'm sorry. I just have Look, to think. Look, we're just going to tell them that we got the call to go to Jocko's before we turned in the dough. Oh, that's just good, Rinko. And because we made no arrests and started no paperwork and just happened to stash the cash underneath the spare tire, they believe us. I swear if we get out of this, I'll never do another wrong thing for as long as I live. You didn't do anything wrong. You never got the chance. Oh, my goodness. Is it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh! Oh, baby, baby, baby. Bobby, check to see if the... For a spare, it's all right. Ah. One time. Um, sir, would you happen to see me? You're right in here this time. Rinko, Rinko, take it easy. Oh, you're tough. This delinquent has caused me inconvenience, morbid thoughts, and put my cardiac system at risk. You live here? Yeah, I live here. Cozy. See that? It's mm -hmm. out. I'm not going to insult your intelligence, Mr. Belker. <laughs> You're right. It's out. Well, it shouldn't be out, Mr. Farnsworth. When we made the funeral arrangements, your company promised me a flame that would never go out. Hmm. Did we say that exactly? Yes, you did. The eternal flame, you called it. Get a copy of your contract, Mr. Belker. You bet I do. Great. 
get to the bottom of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that explains it. You got the eternal flame. I know that, the eternal flame. Well, it's like this, you see, Mr. Belker. We here at Mount Sinai Gardens offer three different varieties of flames in our family torch series. See, got your eternal at 798, like your father has here. You got your perpetual at 898 per, and finally, your perpetual eternal at 1098, which features your three-quarter inch all-weather wick stainless steel support housing, a copper delivery system. Doctor, I'm getting a serious migraine Just a here. minute. What are you saying to me? Are you saying that the perpetual eternal flame's the only one guaranteed 24 hours a day? Seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. But let me tell you one thing I learned about death, my friend. Death is a natural process. One way or another, nature is going to have its way with you. I mean, you take your coffins, for example. You could plunk down four grand on a zinc-lined Mount Zion Deluxe. And you could seal it triple tight, and you're still going to get residual seepage. Nature. What I'm telling you here is you could buy eternal, you could buy perpetual, you could buy perpetual eternal. But if you don't have a windbreak, you could buy perpetual, eternal, perpetual, and your flame is still going to get blown out occasionally. Well, we can... Uh, now, you take your all-weather windbreak, your copper delivery system and your three-quarter inch wick, and you cram it, Farnsworth. Now, he ain't springing for dime one. Now, I got a perfect view of this cut-rate boneyard of yours from the 36th Street overpass every day on my way to work. All right, now, I don't care. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. There's a hurricane blowing out here. I catch the flame on my partner's dad's grave out for one second and you're going to be perpetually, eternally dead. Not perpetually, not eternally, but perpetually, eternally dead. Now, you got it? Uh-huh. Let's get out of here, man. We have done it, Frank, bow to stern. Gabriella here has come up with blank snooped. No unexpended pyrotechnical devices on the premises. How accurate are those dogs? Well, they're accurate enough to sniff out a box of 38 caliber shells that Officer Smell Janich was storing against departmental regulations in his locker. I have spoken to the man. <coughs> You know, I am guessing that this is your standard uh, shop class pipe bomb, fulminated mercury packed with uh, plaster. And if our bomber had been up to snuff, he could have taken out three stalls and a towel rack. Let's not give him a second chance, okay, Howard? Got them, Susis. Hello? Is this a little kid speaking? Oh, hold on, wait, wait a second. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah. Could you say what you said again, please? Jail. You come put 
I'm in there now. He's sleeping. No, say what you said at first. He made a bomb and I watched him make it. The bomb for, for here went off in the station? He wanted to hurt you. He hates you. Get him to tell you where he is. Tell me uh, where you are, little kid. Uh, your address. Hotel Grand 524. Five, two, four. Where is this guy? He's upstairs. He's sleeping now. I'm scared. No, don't be scared. I have to come and get him. He should be dead. I want you to kill him. Well, we're gonna send someone to see you right now. I'm scared. I have to go. It could be a prank, but I don't think so. Me neither. Lewis, it's probably just some kid playing with the phone. Quiet. Help, help, help. Woo. Lieutenant Goldblum from the police department, would you open up in that, please? Oh, no I'm going to have to have this door open right now. Help, help, help. Kick it. What about the kid? There's no kid. Kick it. I'm Reggie. I've got a hold of TJ. If you don't kill him, I will. I'll push him out. No, don't. No. You let TJ fool you into thinking he was dead. And he wasn't. He wasn't. He came back. He came right back. Please. Oh, God. He's got to die. Oh, God, he's got to die. I can't stand it anymore. I can't. I can't. Reggie? Reggie? There is no teacher. You're only going to hurt yourself. escaped from the hospital. TJ put the bomb in the building. It's okay. Nobody got hurt? They all took over. They wouldn't let me come back. I got so tired of listening to them. They didn't think Reggie could do it. I'm so glad he did. He's so quiet.
It's near Washington, Mr. Simone. I made some calls. Turns out you could probably get that item you were interested in, right? But it's gonna be a little more expensive than you were. The fellow I talked to said he need 15 G's on his end. He's from Midtown, right? So is that doable for you? Solid. Well, we're ready to roll whenever you... Good. Okay. Action. Action, Zap. <laughs> listen, listen to me. If you don't start telling the truth, you're going to buy yourself a work stoppage. That's not a threat. That's a realistic evaluation of the situation, something you people don't seem capable of. Did you read Simone? There you go, Captain. Meets on for six. Who's running back up? Jekyllek and Sisneki. Is Simone going to make this pick up himself? Search so? No, I think he's got to send the beard. Is your conversation setting up the meet with him on tape? Every word of it. And we still have him made. Unless we die talking. We're on our way to pick up the goods, Captain. Hold it! What's this story about you going in without a wire? I think I'm going to pass on the Captain. I don't think that's a good idea. I want him hooked up. Simone's sure to pat me down. A wire could give me away. And lack of one could get you dead. Simone's a butcher, and I don't send my men in unprotected to butchers. Well, Captain, there's going to be backups. That's it, Neil. Coordinate through Phil. Good luck. Yeah, OK. Hey, let me get up. Yeah. Okay, check it out, gentlemen. Now, I don't know too much about anatomy, but that sure looks like a heart. Ooh. Lame LaRue, no say. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? We don't dig bookies at Welch up here, huh? That's Buddy Jeanette's ticker. Yeah, and where's his udder? See me. I think the man believes that's the cow's heart, Judy. Whoa! Would be. <laughs> Brinko, go on there and... Don't tell me again. I'm going, I'm going. Something, Andy? Yes, sir. Cap, I thought you just might enjoy seeing what me and Bobby Hill picked up on the street today. $2,942.38. Obvious numbers, operation, we got the slips, we got the money, we got everything. Good work, Andy. Thank you, sir. Sir, you know, it occurs to me there's a strong possibility that the contents of this bag might provide a gold mine of information to our vice officers. I'm sure it will. I'll get it to them right away. Ah, oh, Captain, Bobby Hill was exceptional in the performance of his duty. Driving that car, chasing down that individual, was transporting that money. I don't want you to think just because I come in here alone, I want to take credit for everything. I'll be sure to give him an attaboy. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. You know he'll appreciate that. Sir, it is a shame to waste all that money. It's just going to sit there on some shelf until the city comes to claim it. Not enough money there to, to keep a municipal dump truck in tires. I mean, too bad we can't keep what we find. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Too bad. Thanks, Andy. I guess that's about it, isn't it? You hungry? You want a sandwich or some milk? Mm-mm. What's your name? Speedboat. What's your street name, your real name? Bobby. Bobby? Hey, you know, that's my real name, too. I like Speedboat. 
Okay. You live in that basement all by yourself, Speedboat? Yeah. And where's your mom and dad? Mom saying, gee, I don't know nothing about no dad. Well, did someone put you in a foster home? Yeah, I hated it. I escaped. They tried to put me in Juvie Hall after that. I got out of there, too. I don't need nobody to take care of me. What are you gonna do when you get old, the speedboat? When you get to be a real man? Where do you see yourself? I don't know. Nowhere, I guess. Well, I did it good, buddy. That money is now officially in police custody. Now tell me, don't you feel better about that? Well, I must admit to a certain spring to my step. How's our little car enthusiast? Fine. We're just uh, having a little talk before the youth authority gets here. Can you tell him about his talent for mobility? I swear I cannot figure out how those little munchkin-like legs got down to those pedals and saw the drive. Kill you for that poor chop. Kill that poor chop. He's a tough man, Speedboat. Could always end up the other way around, you know. So there'd be one less nigga in the world. That's all. Bobby, the uh, youth control people are outside. Shall I escort this lad to the front desk? Sure. Uh, besides, can I take another second? Of course. Speedboat. Um, this is for you. It's got my number on it. They'll give you phone privileges where you're going. I want you to use it. Call me up anytime and we'll wrap, okay? About what? Anything. Sign these two, two. Hey, Iggy, what, you think you're trained, huh? Two, two? And <laughs> LaRue, you ought to be doing whoopee cushions in a hemorrhoid clinic. I was pulling that cow heart gag when I was 12. <laughs> Afraid that's about as good as they get on the hills out. <laughs> We're not up to mid then yet, you know. <laughs> and this one here. Just in case you guys got two 16-year-olds waiting in a car to go to Miami. Don't think I ain't thought about it, Egg. <laughs> Weighs out 20 pounds, 12 ounces. Now, here's your lab report. And here's a sample if you want one. Mm. Tough as pedigree. How to get a filling. Hey, you guys be careful. Yeah, Simone's would better be careful. Later, Ray. You want the same business as Ross Um, uh, well, no, Colette. What you're doing is just fine. You have a strong back, Beer. In Vietnam, men with strong back said to be strong in the mind, strong in the rub, strong in everything. Was it bad for you? The war? Very bad. My father died. My brother died. I have to work in the streets since I'm 12 years old. 
When the communists come, there's only one seat on the airplane. My mother says, correct you go. I believe my right for all my family now. I work hard, save money, go to daytime school, learn English. I'm happy now. I give some happiness to you too, Bill. Actually, uh, it's Howard. Hmm? My name is Howard. Howard. Nice name, Howard. Colette, I would very much like to take you to dinner this evening. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll pay for your time. I write that, Bill. You talk to big men up front first, okay? Of course. Colette. Yes, Bill? You are very beautiful. Thank you. Shut it down. Tell the others. Hey, we're in no rush. If you want to give them another half hour? I want to take off. I'll go Washington. Took a pass, kid. Oh, man. Sure sounded ready on the horn. Yeah, they're like cats, huh? They're like gypsies. They hit a crack in the sidewalk, and it's, uh, I ain't going nowhere today, huh? Come on, get in. 